This month is typically a time when our nation reflects on racial strides made throughout the country. But as we continue to have that discussion on how far we still have to go, it's also important to examine how the so-called black identity is constantly changing. A new book does just that by challenging how people view race. The book is called One Drop, Shifting the Lens on Race. It delivers candid narratives from nearly six dozen people, many of whom are mixed ethnicities and backgrounds, but of whom are largely seen by society as, quote, simply black. The author of the book, Dr. Yaba Bla, joins me now. Blay, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Dr. Blay. Thank you so much. Uh, I saw a write-up on your book recently, and it stopped me in my tracks. And I called my team immediately. I said, we've got to get her on. I, I want to read just one of the excerpts from a woman identified as LeBlanc. She uh, identifies herself as biracial or mixed, and she said, I'm always, um, I always wanted to be darker because I didn't want to have to tell people that I'm black. I just wanted them to be able to tell. Now I say that I'm biracial just because I think it's important to embrace cultures, and I think the language of biracial reflects everything that I am. You had people really open up here in this book. Yeah, absolutely. It's about giving them a platform to tell their personal stories and their personal connection to their own racial identities. Um, and, and how do we push this conversation forward? I mean, listen, when we look at the census information, Dr. Blay, 13.1% percent of the people out there identify themselves as black or african-american 2.4 percent identify themselves as two or more races do we push this conversation forward by eliminating this so-called definition of blackness my colleague soledad o'brien did an amazing series as it relates to that but how do we move this conversation forward with so many people identifying with uh, different definitions if that's fair to say it that way well, I think self-identification is important when we look at something like the census or other applications that will ask you to fill out a box. We also need to understand that those boxes translate into resources. And so for me, it's interesting to see how people align themselves and why. And so this conversation is really about checking in with folks about how it is they come to frame their own identities. Yeah. Many of us think about racial identity as something that is just given to us and we meet it. Mm. I want to have a conversation about what what that means for us. Absolutely. And you obviously knew in the selection of the title, One Drop, that that would bring a flurry of emotions, uh, many of them painful for African Americans. But you have someone identified as Andrew, and, and he writes, I've never been put in a situation to have to think about how I identify. I don't exclude my biracialness. I fully embrace my Caucasian roots, just as I do my Jamaican roots. When I'm at home and I'm looking at my mom and my dad and my siblings, I don't necessarily see a black family or a white family. I just see my family. But we know that in some cases, uh, people from biracial backgrounds sometimes feel that they have to side with one group or the other, um, and that does make for a painful childhood for some. Absolutely, and so I think uh, parents do have an immense role in this in terms of helping their children to frame their identities. But what's interesting also about Andrew's narrative is that later on he says that when I'm walking down the street, I'm clear that folks don't see me as a white person. Mm -hmm. And so he understands that part of his racial identity is also about the experience that he has in the world. What is the one question? I, I just interviewed Mariah Carey not terribly long ago, and, and we were talking, and one of the painful parts of her childhood, she talks about being there when a boy at school was bullying her on a bus because of the color of her skin and feeling, you know, per persecuted so often because of her multicultural background. What is the one question you believe we should ask ourselves at this point? I mean, the questions are, are multiple. I'm not sure, sure if there's one question, but I think we do have to question what race is, right? Mm -hmm. Because historically, race has been about what it looks like. I should be able to look at you and tell whether or not you are free or you right. are enslaved. In 2014, what role does race play? Right. Folks in this book are having an experience of complete strangers walking up to them and saying, what are you? Right, right. My question is, once you get that answer, now right. what are you going to do? And so it really do? speaks to the extent to which we really aren't post-racial. We're right. in a space where people still need to be able to put people in boxes so that they're able to then do something with them. Right. Dr. Blake.